جنة 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 والله يا وطننا جنة 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 والله يا وطننا يا وطن يا حبيب يا بترا بالطيب يا وطن يا حبيب يا بترا بالطيب حتى نارك جنة Almost every Friday, a group of anti-regime Syrian protesters stand on the corner of St. Catherine and Bishop in solidarity with the 13-month-old Syrian revolution. Syrian civilians are enduring countless of atrocities at the hands of President Bashar al-Assad's brutal regime. Standing together helps them overcome their frustration at the situation their families and friends are facing back home. But the weekly vigils also serve as a way to engage with the public and raise awareness about their plight. Basically, we're concentrated in uh, three di different directions. The first one is the awareness. Every Friday on the corner of Bishop and St. Catherine, we hold like uh, solidarity gatherings and uh, we try to show Montrealers what's happening in Syria, the atrocities. And the second part of it, we try to revive in Montreal the spirit of the revolution by revolutionary songs and, and slogans that are typical to Syria. <laughs> The second part is the fundraising. We try at least twice a month or once every two weeks to hold a kind of a fundraising event. And the third part is really press pressuring our host country or the Canadian government to take, uh, to take a stance with respect to Syria. So the first achievement that we did is uh, getting Suncor, which is uh, a multi-billion uh, uh, company dealing with oil and gas that have over a billion dollar project in Syria. And any Syrian would tell you that oil and gas in Syria is regime owned. So whatever money happens or uh, the, the, that is occurred from this industry goes directly to the regime, which means those are the salaries of the Shabiha and the thugs that have uh, been committing all these crimes in Syria. Refugees have poured into Turkey in the north, Lebanon in the west, and Jordan in the south. The status of these refugees is appalling. The refugee situation is disastrous in, uh, in Syria and uh, the largest amount of refugees are going to Turkey. I would say the, it's the approximate number is approximately 30,000 and I know that just last week there was 3,000 refugees that went to Turkey. So it's getting worse, worse and worse. And in Lebanon, because of the political situation and because the Lebanese government is uh, is almost a Syrian proxy government, extremely loyal to the to the Assad regime. The situation of the refugees there is extremely bad, and actually they don't even have the status of refugee. They are called visitors, so the situation is bad. In Jordan, it's not as bad as in Lebanon, but it's still not good. So we're trying really to concentrate as well to send as many funds as we can to uh, Lebanon, Jordan, and Turkey. And uh, the other activity as well as part of pressuring the government is really a petition. There is a petition that we use uh, almost weekly to take signatures from uh, Montrealers and it's being used as well in other parts of Canada and online, which have basic demands. The first one is uh, obviously to close the shame embassy that we have in Ottawa. And this is the problem that we have and the contradiction that we have in Canada. We have our Foreign Minister John Byrd and our Prime Minister Stephen Harper that say that the Assad regime has lost legitimacy. The Assad regime has no legitimacy. People who kill in the 21st century cannot uh, have legitimacy and yet we have a political representation in Ottawa for this killer regime. So there is a contradiction in, uh, in our government speech and, uh, and we will continue pressuring them until we see this, this shame embassy closed. More recently, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, in an attempt to broker a ceasefire, is attempting to pressure the Syrian regime into agreeing to a six-point peace plan that should see heavy weaponry removed from civilian populated areas in order to allow for humanitarian corridors to be established 
and in order for a 300-strong team of UN peace observers to fly into Syria. Meanwhile, the violence has not subsided. Uh, the latest that's happening is uh, the Kofi Annan plan is uh, virtually being implemented. We have five observers for uh, 22 million Syrians, which is, of course, uh, pathetic. Uh, in soccer matches, we have six uh, observers or six referees to referee a 22-player game. So uh, this is what they are trying to sell to the Syrian people, that uh, the Kofi Annan plan is going to force Assad to stop his killing, which is obviously not true. We are seeing killing every day, including today. Uh, Assad's Shabiha or thugs are still shooting at protesters. Heavy art artillery, including tanks, are still invading cities. And the point out of all of that is that the only strategy the regime has is the strategy of fear. And if they remove their, uh, their arms and their shabiha from the streets, it will be the end of the regime. Whenever there is no tanks and whenever there is no shabiha, there is large protest. I can give you the example of Hama in July, where half a million of people out of a population of 600,000 was on the street protesting. But after the invasion of tanks, this number decreased enormously. The question on everyone's mind is how effective will the UN observer mission be? The, the international community is uh, very, uh, is actually not because has become now after so many conflicts in Rwanda and uh, Kosovo and, and Bosnia and all they have they have uh, uh, they have the experience now to deal with uh, with the situation uh, as uh, as the one we have in Syria. Even though each each, uh, each country is, has its own specificity, but I think they have what it takes for 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 this mission to be a success and uh, I, I agree with you on this that uh, the regime is definitely more cornered and more exposed than ever before mm -hmm. and i agree also that it's probably the last chance before we have like an all-out civil war because if, if this fails mm -hmm. i mean i don't know to what extent the united nations is going to have any credibility about the monitors there is a benefit i don't want to disqualify it there is a benefit because we know for a fact that even when the phony Arab observers were in Syria, killing continued, but there were huge protests that were happening in Syria because Syrians had a sense of protection when they saw these observers. And I can tell you something for a fact, Bashar al-Assad would not have bombarded Bab Amro for three consecutive weeks, three consecutive weeks of heavy bombardment with tanks and with the missiles that were used, Scud missiles that are being were used in Bab Amro and Hamas. This would not have happened if the Arab observers were still there. So having professional observers is definitely something that would help the civilian movement and give the sense of protections for Syrians. Will this bring down the regime? The answer is no. With the disappointing outcome that came with NATO intervention in Libya last year, the Syrian people are understandably cautious about foreign military intervention. I think we should give it a full chance, but it's it's, it's fair to say that it, it there's not much. Why do you, why do you think there's I, I not think, much? I think the problem which we have now is that people on the street are like, uh, of course, they are excused. They are like, they are, blood is being spilled uh, on, the, on, 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 the, on the street. People are like paying high cost of like uh, casualties and people like, uh, wounded, losing limbs. It's like it's very hard for uh, for anybody to endure all this like pressure without like screaming like uh, you know we want military intervention, we want like a solution now. The emotions run very high and uh, and uh, like but if we want if we see what's what's like it's not uh, it's not by our wishes. Like like people say we want military intervention. It's not like we push a button, United States and France and the NATO gonna come. But what do we have? We control? need we need to use the resources which we have. The resources which we have is our own own our own self, civil disobedience, uh, non-violence, uh, demonstrations, all these kind of strikes. If we go to the, the other extreme completely, let's say a military intervention from NATO or Turkey or whoever mm. does take place and a massive bombing campaign does happen, do you think that would actually have what, what, you, what you just said, it would have an extreme effect on the level of atrocities that the regime is carrying out? Do you think of it's going to increase? Of course, of course. Gonna, any use of violence will escalate the violence on the other side. So there is, 
and of course this will be can be pretext for uh, for the for uh, the regime to uh, to uh, seek independence in the coastal area mm -hmm. because this is what the, you know he claims that he have uh, lot supported That's and That's a we, very controversial uh, topic of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah and we heard we heard that they are moving lot of uh, resources whether we, whether weapons or like uh, or food like uh, like piling food uh, resources in in the, in the coastal area where they they might uh, make it as last resort if like the rest of Syria fell. So we never know. I mean, like, but any use of violence will will make will lead to these radical solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, peaceful, peaceful, uh, peaceful, uh, you know, nonviolence means will maintain the unity of the country. Unfortunately, as many of you know, and uh, I mean, specifically. Uh, in the left or pro-democracy groups or human rights groups, we all know that if the West intervenes in Syria, it is not for the love of democracy and it's not for a civil country in Syria. We know that there is agenda, there is sometimes proxy wars that, that are being encouraged in Syria. This is the situation and we know it, but we are desperate. This is OM99 Media for CUTV.